Welcome to this next lesson of the Peak Performance Module. And in this lesson, we're gonna be going over winning the war of the mind and why that's so important in your entrepreneurial journey. Now, as I mentioned here, half of the battle is mental and without conquering your mind, you will always be fighting an uphill battle. So what do I mean by this? Imagine in your daily entrepreneurial life, and some of you probably have experienced this at some point, maybe something doesn't go the way that you want it to. Maybe someone cancels on a meeting, maybe someone doesn't end up closing, maybe a team member leaves, right? So all these different scenarios that you will encounter at some point along your journey. Winning the war of the mind doesn't mean that you have full control over your thoughts because your thoughts are quite random. This is not always something that you can control. In fact, I would argue that you never really can control it. It's not that you're controlling what you're thinking, but it's controlling how you process that information, how you process the external situation that happens in front of you, and then how do you react to that appropriately and in a logical fashion that is positive and that helps move your business forward. That's what I mean when it comes to the battle and the battle of the mind. And so there are four main areas, I think, that all successful people have mastered without fail. And when I say successful, I mean long-term successful. Now, those four areas, in my opinion, are time, energy, resources, and mind. And in this lesson, we're going to actually focus exclusively on mind, as in my opinion, it's equal in weight to the other three combined. So in my experience, this is what the split looks like. You will have 50% down the middle is purely just control over the mind. Then you have 10% of the battle is actually time, right? So how much, how many hours out of your 24 hour day do you have to actually put in for work? How many hours do you have to allocate to other things, right? How many hours do you have to allocate towards preparation and getting ready for things? Then you have 20% of the battle is your energy. How do you feel in that very moment? Do you feel up to the task? Do you feel tired? Do you feel drained? Are you burnt out? Or do you have abundant energy? And are you ready to just go hours and hours and end doing deep focused work? And then you have the remaining 20%, which is just resources. So this can be knowledge. This can be, you know, this obviously can be know how, but then this also can be monetary resources, right? Do you have the financial resources to invest into the growth of your business? So this is what the split looks like personally, from my opinion. And that's why I'm devoting an entire lesson exclusively just to introduce you guys to the concept of controlling your mind, because in my opinion, it's so important. All right. So that's the split. And in my opinion, there are also three different hurdles when it comes to conquering your mind, because it's not as simple as, okay, overnight, you know, you wake up the next morning and you're like, okay, now all of a sudden I know exactly how to process my thoughts. I know exactly how to divide and distinguish between emotional and logical responses. It doesn't happen overnight like that. And so from my experience, there are three different types of mental hurdles that every entrepreneur has to get over. And the first hurdle is fear. And this is probably the most common hurdle as a beginner because fear manifests itself in many, many, many forms. And as I mentioned earlier, it's a natural response. It's a natural evolutionary response. When you're moving from a place of familiarity over to a place of unfamiliarity. Now, oftentimes we don't even recognize it as fear because our subconscious mind holds us back from growth if we don't consistently and constantly nurture it. So what are some examples of this, right? So it could be fear of making a monetary investment. And as I say here, this happens all the time with both clients and agency owners. I've noticed this. We know exactly which actions to take, but we're too risk averse to take them. And the what if voice in your head is the most common manifestation of fear. So for example, if you're about to invest $1,000 into your agency and you have your little voice at the back of your head asking you, okay, what if I spend this $1,000 and I lose all of it? And so most of the time, it's not an issue with the investment itself. It's not that you don't trust in the underlying thing you're investing into, but rather it's an issue of incongruency and not believing you can handle things on your end or not believing that you're worthy of making a return. So imagine you're investing into a team of VAs, let's say, 
let, let's say it's not a thousand dollars. Let's say you're just paying them on an hourly basis to handle the grunt work because you've already understood the process in depth and you've done a little bit of it yourself and you're looking to offset and allocate some of the capital that you have into lead sourcing just to make things easier. Now, it's a big hurdle because you've never paid someone to do any sort of work like this before. But a lot of it, if you're afraid of it, isn't that you're afraid that the VA is not going to do a good job. A lot of it is you being afraid that even if they do do a good job, that you can't actually close the client or that you won't capitalize on it, right? Or maybe they book you a bunch of appointments, but you don't actually do your due diligence and follow up to the extent that you're maximizing the output that your VAs are getting you. I hope that makes sense. In a lot of situations, it's just that you don't believe that you're worthy. You don't believe that you're able to do your part in the role. Okay. So remember the principle of mentalism. This is from one of my favorite books of all time. It's called The Kabbalion. The principle of mentalism says that all is mind and the universe is mental. So in other words, the energy that you put out is what you will receive. Invest half-heartedly or fearfully and little will come back to you because others will also invest half-heartedly or fearfully into you. So this actually doesn't require you to believe in any sort of, you know, weird, um, you know, manifestation, uh, you know, abstract kind of belief. It's, it's not even really, um, it's not really something spiritual. This is something logical, right? So if you put fearful energy into anything that you invest in, then what reason does someone else, after seeing that fear that you have, that you subconsciously transfer from your mannerisms, from the way that you conduct yourself, right? From the way that you interact with other people. What reason do others have to believe in you that you can deliver on your end? So for example, what reason would the VA have to believe that you're going to do your job and actually close the client? Maybe that makes them a little less motivated to do a good job for you. And then on the other end, if you put out fearful energy, right, then your mannerisms and the way that you interact with clients, that'll really leak across, even across a screen, even if you're on a Zoom call. And so to that end, what reason does a client have to believe that you can actually get them results and that you'll try your best to make sure they're successful? So I hope that makes sense. It's really just a logical principle. It doesn't require you to be any sort of spiritual person. So when it comes to fear, you need to recognize that none of this is going to help you take your business further. And you also need to put out the energy that you want to be seeing in your business. So that's the first thing, fear of making a monetary investment. Another very common fear is making a time investment. And this is also very similar, right? So you don't put in the time for your business because you're afraid that after all the hours that you put in, after all the grind, you're not going to get anything in return. You're going to come out empty handed. So to that end, it's better to not try at all and just stay in your comfort zone, right? So aimlessly scrolling through Instagram, binging Netflix, doing all the things that make you feel productive, but actually aren't. So this fear is somewhat similar, and I'm going to go through how to handle these fears in a little bit, but just recognize that the monetary and time investment are one and the same. And I know a lot of you guys are maybe holding back on doing what you should be doing. So for example, sending out emails, building your lead list, uh, getting in touch with prospects, actually taking the calls, doing your best to follow up with the calls, maximizing every lead that you get, all those little things that you know you have to be doing as an agency owner, but you just don't do. It's not that you have weak willpower, right? A lot of you guys ask me, how do you maximize your discipline? It's usually not discipline. It's that you're afraid that if you try so hard, either you're not worthy of it, or you're just going to come out empty handed or both, right? So that's really the common denominator when it comes to these two fears here. And then lastly, you also have a different type of fear, which is fear of rejection, right? So this can manifest as not replying to an email, not taking a sales call or freezing up after an objection, et cetera, et cetera. So again, it's not that you guys don't have the resources. It's not that you guys don't have the faculties mentally to deal with these situations. It's that you're paralyzed by the prospect of you being rejected by a client. And that is a very dangerous type of fear to maintain in business because with that fear, you basically can't do anything, right? Because business requires risk. 
business necessitates rejection. It's a part of the game, right? You have to overcome it at some point. And this is actually probably one of the deadliest fears that you can have and let it sit in your mind. And I'm going to show you guys how to deal with this in a second. So in these situations, what do you do? So here's a solution. There's no hack or magic pill for any of this. So to overcome fear, you need to do two things. The first one is to reprogram your mind. So here in parentheses, I put embrace the chasm and transform the subconscious mind. So again, what does this mean? This means not transforming the way that you think, but transforming the way that you approach certain situations, transforming the actions that you take to approach those situations, right? Because again, your thoughts are essentially random. You can't control the emotions that come out. You can't control the way that you feel about certain things, but you can control the actions that you actually take after you feel those emotions. And then the second thing is to take small consistent steps and do not give up. This is pretty self-explanatory. So for all these three hurdles, I'm just gonna go in depth into this toggle here, which is reprogramming your mind. Okay, so the first thing you can do to overcome fear is to simply write down affirmations. And this might seem very basic. It might seem like something that won't really be a value add to you, but I assure you this will help you overcome your fears, especially if you're a beginner entrepreneur, this will help you overcome your fears a lot. And this is probably one of the most impactful things you can do because without a clear end goal, without a clear vision of what you're going to achieve and what type of person you're going to become, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to overcome the fear. And as I said, that's necessary to achieving long-term success. So for affirmations, one example is buying a notebook and just every morning, opening up the notebook, taking a pen and just writing three affirmations and writing that you will easily achieve those three affirmations. So for example, for me, it could be something like I will easily make X amount of money in whatever year. So this has changed year over year since I started my journey. I will easily wake up at 6.30 a.m. every day and I will easily, for example, at this point in my life, maintain a 4.0 GPA every quarter, right? So these affirmations change for me every year. A couple of years ago, it was, I'll easily make my first 100K. Uh, I will easily wake up at 5.30 a.m. every day and I will easily bench press 225 pounds, right? This was a few years ago. So this stuff is subject to change, but it's important for you to get a good start. And this is something that I started writing down ever since I was 16 years old. And even up until now, I do this every single morning without fail. If you look at my bullet journal, I have literally every single day, even on weekends, written down these affirmations. And that sort of iteration and that consistency, most importantly, is what helps me build good habits and also what instills into me this unshakable sense of confidence to the point where nowadays, even when someone, for example, throws a weird objection at me or I encounter a situation when the variables just don't match up and everything that I planned just kind of goes by the wayside, I do not react emotionally. I allow myself the room for emotion, but I know at the end of the day what I'm capable of and I'm very, very confident that everything I set out to achieve, if I have a proper intent behind it, that I can actually achieve it. And that's what affirmations do for you mentally. So this is something that I highly encourage you to do. Next thing you can do as well is visualization. So every evening before bed, you want to go ahead and listen to an audiobook, podcast, book summary, etc. So just some positive form of media to maintain the right mindset. And then just before drifting off to sleep, you want to visualize that which is hard to do. So visualize the struggle and eventually conquering that struggle and breaking through to the desired outcome. So what I mean by that which is hard to do is something that is just very difficult for you on a day to day basis. So maybe for you, it's getting on a sales call and actually doing well in a sales call. When you do the visualization exercise before bed, you want to visualize yourself maybe struggling to opening up the conversation, uh, doing what you normally do, and then eventually having this epiphany in your mind, for example, because you stuck with it, because you tried your best to apply a logical approach, because you tried your best to empathize with the client, you eventually click with the client, the call ends up going great, 
And then maybe at the end of the call, you sign on the client, right? So you need to visualize the entire process. You need to visualize the struggle and then you actually breaking through on the other side, no matter how difficult it is. Little things like that. And that's, again, the power of suggestion as well, right? Little things like visualization will actually help you achieve it in real life and feel more confident whenever you encounter this block of fear, right? And the same thing applies, for example, if you find it difficult to wake up in the morning, you can literally visualize yourself in the cold in the cold environment of your room at let's say 5 a.m. and struggling to get up and eventually you breaking through and throwing off your covers and standing up, doing a stretch, going downstairs, getting a glass of water, washing up, right? That could be your visualization as well. So whatever you're struggling with, you wanna go through this visualization exercise and I promise you this will help you, you know, not necessarily do it very naturally, but it's going to help you to an extent in overcoming the sort of fear that you'll encounter with something you find difficult. So keep that in mind. Another exercise that you also want to be doing and that I recommend to all entrepreneurs is meditation. Now I myself at this point, I use a lot of different meditation resources. I don't just exclusively use the Headspace and Calm apps because those are uh, quite beginner friendly. And I find that uh, oftentimes unguided meditation is very helpful as well, but headspace and calm are a very good start if you've never meditated before. Uh, and obviously it can be done first thing in the morning after a workout, before a work session, before bed, basically any point in the day. So make sure you download either one of those two apps and check that out. You also want to make sure that your media consumption is on point. So I'm not telling you to binge watch a bunch of series right now or watch a movie right away, but when you do have the time, so when you finished all your work and done all your core tasks, whenever you consume media, you want to make sure that it's something that aligns with your goals, right? So try to stay away from negative media, try to stay away from media that distracts you from your goals and that has nothing to do with your goals. So for example, even if you're going to watch a movie, why not watch a movie that has something to do with business and entrepreneurship and innovation, or maybe even just overcoming struggle or that has something to do with a complex plot, right? Intelligence, right? Having to think about the plot a lot, having to think about the deeper meaning behind things. So even consuming media like that on a regular basis is much more helpful than consuming media that has nothing to do with what your goal in life is, which is again, to build a successful business and to become a successful person. So as I said here, I actually have a couple of other lessons in the course that have different recommendations of shows, movies, music, books, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So make sure to check that out after watching this lesson. Another thing you can try as well is establishing a routine. And I'm going to go more into depth about this in a later lesson. But just before doing something daunting, like again, let's use the sales call example, you want to get into your routine. So this could be, for example, something like brewing a coffee. If you're a coffee person listening to a specific song that gets you in a serious and calm sort of mood, it could be taking a deep breath and stepping into your ideal version of self, right? So literally going in through the nose, out through the mouth, and then envisioning you literally stepping in to another person. And that other person is your 2.0 version of yourself, right? So it's kind of hard, it's kind of abstract to, you know, solely tell you guys about, but it's something that you have to kind of experiment with over time. But little things like that make the biggest difference. So for example, for me, before every exam that I have for school or before every sales call that I have, I always have a specific routine, right? So, you know, if it's first thing in the morning, I'll literally go downstairs, I'll brew a coffee, I'll put on a specific song, that gets me in the mood every single time, right? Nothing too upbeat, nothing too calm, right? Something perfectly in the middle. And then just take a deep breath. And again, I do that exercise. I step into the ideal version of myself. And I know it sounds a little bit silly if you've never done this before, but you need to at least try it out. Give it a chance. Step into the ideal version of yourself and then proceed with calm, rational thought, okay? Which takes me to my next point which is you need to also be more conscious throughout the day of your heart overriding your head. So whenever you have something you're fearful about, let's say again, making that investment, 
if that happens, you need to allow yourself the fearful reaction, but also tell yourself this is as far as I'll allow. Okay. So if you're having a mental dialogue and you're like, ah, oh, I don't know, this is, you know, the last thousand dollars that I have to invest into the VAs or into my agency. And I just don't know if I should make this decision. I'm scared that if I, if this doesn't turn out right, that I'm going to have to struggle for months and months, et cetera, et cetera. Again, allow yourself that fear. I'm not depriving you of it, but you also need to tell yourself mentally that this is as far as I'll allow the fear to go. And you can even say it out loud. This is as far as I'll allow. Okay. Acknowledge your faults, struggles, and victories in daily journal as well. So just basically do a brain dump for five, 10 minutes before you go to sleep every night. Super easy to do. And this will really, really help you work out all those little fears and anxieties that have been kind of nagging you throughout the day. And when you put it out in writing and you acknowledge it, you can immediately see that it's really not as scary as you made it out to be. Okay. So that's the final way of dealing with fear. And at the bottom, as I mentioned before, you need to be taking small, consistent steps and you do not ever want to give up. Okay. So when you're doing these things, when you're doing affirmations, visualization, meditation, consuming the right types of media, establishing a routine, practicing calm, rational thought, you want to do this literally every single day. And you want to capitalize on the momentum that you get from this. You do not want to give in. Okay. And if you do give in, you don't say, okay, I gave in already. Let's just give in for everything else. Right. You want to immediately get yourself back on track, get yourself back into the groove again, and just take small baby steps. Right. So if you're afraid of doing one task, like taking sales calls, why not just start with taking one sales call, right? If you're afraid of sending emails, why not start with sending 10 emails that day? See how that makes you feel. If you're okay with it next day, bump it up to 20, right? So that's the process that you have to follow in order to effectively overcome this first hurdle of fear. So now we're moving on to the second hurdle, which is contentment, which is also known as inertia, right? So all of us have experienced this before at some point in our lives, right? Not even exclusively to entrepreneurship. So that can include no drive to get out of bed, no drive to increase income, and also no drive to finish strong in whatever you're doing. So again, that solution, there is no hack or magic pill for this. To overcome inertia, you need to do two things. Reprogram your mind, as I said, and in this scenario, it's tasting success through sense perception and to take small consistent steps and not ever giving up. So what is the first thing in this scenario? Well, what I mean by tasting success is that there's a set of things that you can either do for free or you can do as a reward once you've accomplished some sort of goal, right? So one thing I did for free, for example, to reprogram my mind, to have the motivation to complete work, right? To overcome contentment was for example, to drive around a wealthy neighborhood. So I live in a neighborhood in the Inland Empire in Southern California, and there's a city nearby called Chino Hills, and they have uh, basically a bunch of uh, very, very luxurious, very high end homes in a very, very wealthy neighborhood. And two years ago, when I first started the journey, I literally, you know, I would drive up there every once in a while and I would just admire the view and I would look at how people from the upper class were living and I would look at the homes and the environment that was in. And I would remind myself again that this is what I was destined to achieve, right? This level of success is actually just the starting point of what I want to achieve. And so when I went back home and, you know, for example, the next day, if I didn't really feel up to the task, I would remember those experiences that I've had looking at those homes and I would immediately make a connection between what I needed to be doing and what I wanted. Okay. So that's just one example, right? Driving around a wealthy neighborhood, associating yourself with successful people. You could also, again, try on items. You can try on expensive items at a high-end store. So you could literally ask to try on a Rolex. You can literally ask to try on an AP. You can ask to try on expensive clothing, right? No one's going to judge you for that. And just the feeling you get from putting on that product is really going to change your outlook on what you can achieve, right? This is not something that I can just describe to you guys by just saying it. It's something that you have to do for yourself. But once you do it, you're going to feel like, wow, this is what I'm destined to be. This is where I belong. Okay. 
And as I said, hang around successful people. So you can also use me and this group's veterans as resources as well. You can ask us questions. You can even just mix it up and have casual chat with us, right? All of that is going to be very inspiring because especially if you're early in the journey, we're going to have seen things that you have not seen yet. And we're going to be able to show you how to deal with those scenarios. So that's also very important. And again, one thing you could do in your free time, if you've already completed all your work, watch an inspiring show or movie, right? I, I really couldn't care less if you spent your free time uh, watching something that has to do with business and entrepreneurship or something that has to do with deep rational thought because you've earned it, right? Assuming that you've actually done your work. So go ahead, don't feel guilty about it and just watch an inspiring show or movie, right? Especially if you're stuck in a rut and you can't find the motivation to actually push harder in your business. Uh, another thing you could do is also create a designated playlist, right? So I'm actually going to share some of the music that I listen to as well in a later lesson in this course. Um, but one thing you can do to overcome that sort of sense of inertia, that's that sense of not wanting to do more is just put on your favorite playlist. And that's going to get you in the mood, especially if it's motivational music, it's going to get you in the mood to do the work that you need to be doing. And my most memorable personal experience, this is just a very short aside, but when I was 14, I flew back to Hong Kong, which is my hometown. And one of my relatives actually uh, took me out to a dinner, uh, a very nice high-end Japanese restaurant in Hong Kong. And we were in the financial district and the restaurant was at the very, very, very top of the skyscraper. And I just remember looking down at the city, right? So we have this very, very good nightline view we're in one of the highest places in Hong Kong. We're looking down from a very fancy restaurant, very good food, excellent atmosphere. And you just look down from the skyline or from the skyscraper rather. And all of a sudden you realize, hey, maybe, you know, this, this might sound wild, but maybe one day I can have it all, right? At least this was the thought that was running through my head at 14, looking down from that skyscraper. And as funny as that sounds, that emotion that I felt from that left such a strong impression on me that it carried over even now. So whenever I think about my loftier goals, whenever I think about what I want to achieve, that scene just sort of replays to me in my mind every single time. And that's one thing that you really, really want to make sure carries over to your daily life. If you have any sort of experience, right, from doing these things above or some sort of variation of it, you want to make sure that you remember it very clearly so that when you need it, you can call on it, right? And at some point, it just kind of comes naturally to you as well. Other things you could do for rewards, if you've done your due diligence and you've done your work and you, you know, maybe you sign on a client this month and, you know, you're in a good mood, buy a nice gift for a loved one, right? Nothing like buying a gift for someone you care about that helps you realize why you do what you do. Again, same thing with, going on a date, right? Or maybe if you're not interested in the romance side of things, maybe you can take a friend out to dinner, right? And again, that will remind you, especially if you're going out with a high value person, that will remind you what you do this for, that will remind you what you can achieve if you stay consistent. And also, for example, splurging on things that help you succeed, right? So I'm not telling you guys to spend money on, you know, bad quality designer clothing, because I've gone through that phase, right? not stuff like that, but improving your desk setup, right? Buying new biohacking tools that are kind of high end, right? Buying books. And so all these things help you overcome contentment because they all give you a taste of what success can give you and therefore will incentivize you to take action right away. And again, there's no secret to this, taking small consistent steps and never ever giving up. That is basically the key to overcoming contentment. And the last hurdle here, hurdle three, is boredom. And boredom strikes when, for example, you're 30 minutes into your deep work block and all of a sudden you feel an urge to reach for your phone and just binge YouTube or, you know, scroll through social media or send unnecessary texts, right? Anything but that which is difficult and monotonous. So again, examples, scrolling through social media during work block, taking a two hour break when your break should have been for 10 to 15 minutes, I hear that's very common among some of the students in this group. Uh, playing video games in the middle of a weekday, procrastinating on lead sourcing, following up, or taking just 30 seconds to slack a team member for something important. 
right? So all of these things are a product of boredom because you just feel like it's so monotonous that you don't even want to do it anymore, right? Because you're doing the same thing over and over. And again, solution, I have to repeat this the third time because I really want to drill this into your mind. There's no hack or magic pill for this. To overcome inertia, you need to do two things. What's the first thing? I know you guys should probably know it by now. Reprogram your mind. And in this scenario, make your work more enjoyable. Okay, so don't just take the boredom at face value and just take it, you know, lying down. You want to do everything that you can to make your work the opposite of boring, right? So what's one thing you can do? You can use gamification, right? I'm sure that none of you guys really ever get bored playing a video game or none of you, you know, if you're into sports, you never really got bored, I don't know, playing basketball, for example. So if you treat your work like a game and you alter certain aspects of it to make it more fun, you can easily use it to beat boredom. So some of the things you can try, for example, color coding or making your work more aesthetically pleasing. So if you're working with a very bland spreadsheet, your lead list, for example, why not put like a GIF in it? Or why not put like an extra image on the side or something that motivates you? Or maybe switch up some colors of the columns or of the title rows, right? There's tons of stuff you can do to make your work, you know, more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, another thing you could do is also maybe creating a point system for personal wins, right? So it doesn't have to be points. It could be any sort of habit tracking software or anything you can tick off and you get like a small rush when you complete that task. That's one thing you can do as well, right? Or you could also use Notion like I am right now or Todoist or any other sort of to-do software. And again, you can keep track of tasks and high-level schedule. And again, that's another aspect of gamifying your workflow. And the next thing you can do is also viewing each opportunity as a challenge or beatable level. So maybe next week you have a sales call, for example. You can literally view signing on that client as you getting to the next level, you leveling up in your agency, right? So a lot of this is just the way that you perceive the game that you're playing, but you need to be able to look at it with humor and you need to be able to look at it as something fun, right? Even if it's very difficult in the beginning, if you tell yourself that it's fun and if you change certain aspects of it to make it a little bit more fun and to make it at least somewhat more interesting, over time, you're going to learn to love the game, okay? And the last thing could be something like playing music, right? And having a different playlist for different scenarios. So if you're doing deep work, obviously, you don't want to listen to something with lyrics. So you want to uh, play something that's a little bit more atmospheric. Uh, classical music usually works fine. Binaural beats usually works fine. Uh, if you're doing something less intensive, you can always play your favorite, I don't know, rap or pop playlist, right? So to maybe take some time to put together a playlist that gets you in a certain mood whenever you hear it. And that will really, really help you overcome boredom because if you're doing something as boring as data entry and lead sourcing, that usually doesn't require that much mental capacity. So you can just play some music you enjoy, right? And that'll get you in the mood to at least stick with it for a few hours. Okay, so gamification is one thing. The next thing is also creating a comfortable work environment. So this is personally my favorite approach. And when you work in a comfortable, familiar environment, you have positive thoughts that come to you naturally, and you'll genuinely enjoy even the most boring forms of work. So if you're making, let's say, less than five grand a month, you can just do something simple. You don't have to purchase anything new, actually. You can literally just rearrange your space, clean up your desk a little bit, uh, print out some posters or reminders. So anything motivational, or maybe you want to write down some of your goals and tape it to your wall. Uh, you can play some music, as I mentioned. And one of the most important things for me is opening up my windows and letting in some fresh air and natural light. And I think that's especially important nowadays in quarantine. Uh, you definitely want to have enough natural sunlight coming in and at least some fresh air and just open up your windows, even if it's for an hour, and that'll really boost your productivity. If you're making greater than 5K a month, then you can consider investing in things that spruce up your work environment or make you more excited to work. So as I said, I'm gonna have more on this in a later lesson as well. And lastly, you can also change your approach to work entirely, right? So these are all external things, gamification and creating a comfortable work environment. That's all affecting stuff that is independent of you. But if you're bored, you can also ask yourself the following. What's wrong with feeling bored, right? So what if I feel bored? It's a natural part of life, right? It's a natural order of things. Why am I so desperate to escape the boredom, right? 
And do I really have so little self-control that I need to run to my phone whenever I feel bored? And the last question, which is especially powerful, is if I'm not working, then what else could I be doing to make better use of my time, right? What else is more productive than me actually working on my business? What else would I be doing? Would I be playing video games? Would I be going out with friends again? Would I be spending money unnecessarily? Do any of those things contribute to my goals? No. Then what do I need to be doing? Even if it's boring, work, right? So ask yourself the following. And also at the end of the day, you need to realize that no matter what I give you, right? The gamification, creating a comfortable work environment, asking yourself questions, all of those things listed above are only there to aid you you will still need to bite the bullet and push through the boredom. And at the end of the day, that's true for all these hurdles. I'm just giving you guys solutions that are gonna make it easier on you, that are gonna ease the load, but you still need to push through the boredom. So if you are an entrepreneur and you're built different, you need to conduct yourself as such, okay? So there's no other way around it. If you truly want this, if you're truly an entrepreneur, if you're truly who you set out to be, then you need to conduct yourself as such. And as I said over and over, you want to continue to take small, consistent steps and do not give up. So if you're struggling with boredom and you overcome boredom once, you don't want to just leave it at that. You can take baby steps, sure. So you can set out a goal for yourself every day, let's say, to not get distracted for at least two hours, right? And maybe tomorrow you want to work distraction free for three hours, but you never want to stop that flow, maybe unless it's a weekend and if you've done everything that you need to, maybe you can take a day off, right? But that aside, when you should be working, you wanna maintain momentum come hell or high water. Whatever happens, you wanna maintain it because as soon as you lose it, it's very easy to just fall off the wagon completely. So that's it for this lesson. I hope this was helpful. This was a very, very in-depth lesson, but I spoke a lot about overcoming the battle of the mind, different exercises you can do, different sort of solutions that will help make it easier. But at the end of the day, you do need to make the decision consciously yourself that if you're an entrepreneur, if you're built differently, you need to conduct yourself in a certain way. So hopefully this was helpful and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.